Hey there, this is Pastor Bob Dickerson from the First Baptist Church of Marion, Illinois. And uh, this is the October 11th, 2020 lesson, session six, from Explore the Bible, uh, produced by Lifeway Christian Resources. The lesson is entitled, God Protects. It's from the text, Isaiah 31, verses 1 through 9. To summarize it in a sentence, we might say, God is able to protect his people from enemies. For those of you that have ever been to our house, you know that my wife has a little poodle dog by the name of Paris. She is definitely my wife's dog, and that little pooch follows her wherever she goes uh, in the house. But when Robin uh, has people over, and she gets frustrated that the dog wants the same kind of attention she gets when there's nobody there. Uh, she gets, uh, sometimes brings her over to me, uh, and I become her safe place. Uh, I hold her, and she gets calm. And even though I am not her go-to person, I am better than nothing, especially when she thinks she needs to be protected from her adopted mother, who, when is taken beyond her limit, can be a force to reckon with, especially if you are a small, annoying puppy. Well, just as Paris, uh, our little dog, uh, feels like she needs protection sometimes, all of us feel that way. And we need to be reminded that God is able to protect from our enemies. But we also have to be reminded what our lesson writer led with in the commentary. Listen to what he said. God requires fire to be refined and purified. I'm sorry, God, gold requires fire to be refined and purified. Melting the ore provides a means for separating the gold from other elements included in the raw material. The process also serves as a means for testing the gold. We too must face some type of fire for our faith to be tested, refined, and purified. This fire can come in all kinds of shapes and forms. For the Israelites, the threat of war served as a test of their faith revealing their true character. Very few people like testing, but God loves us so much that he wants us to be the best we can be, just like it is sometimes painful to get in shape and learn new disciplines. It is similar in the spiritual realm. Well, let's see what Isaiah has to tell us today about how God protects us, but still allows us to go through things that will help us to be stronger and to become better versions of ourselves for the future. Our first point is false hope. Trusting in human strength rather than God's power will ultimately lead to defeat. Isaiah 31 verses 1 through 3 says, Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help and who depend on horses. They trust in the abundance of chariots and in the large number of horsemen. They do not look to the Holy One of Israel and they do not seek the Lord. But he also is wise and brings disaster. He does not go back on what he says. He will rise up against the house of the wicked and against the allies of evildoers. Evil doers. Egyptians are men, not God. Their horses are flesh, not spirit. When the Lord <coughs> raises his hand to strike, the helper will stumble and the one who is helped will fall. Both will perish together. Now, Isaiah called out Hezekiah for turning to Egypt for help when facing the Assyrians. He reminded the king that God isn't limited in his power. Well, what was wrong with Judah seeking help from the Egyptians? Well, Deuteronomy 17, 16 says, However, he must not acquire many horses for himself or send the people back to Egypt to acquire many horses. For the Lord has told you, you are never to go back that way again. The most grievous offense was they do not look to the Holy One of Israel and they do not seek the Lord. So how does it dishonor God when we don't check with him first about what we should do about any situation or problem in our lives? In the first lesson of our uh, basic mentoring program here at Marion First Baptist Church, we talk about counseling with God every day through Bible study. You know, people pay hundreds of, of insurance dollars to seek counseling, which is fine. And uh, the counselors have their place. Uh, 
But why not take advantage of having access to the wonderful counselor who knows the exact advice that we need to persevere? So why did Isaiah remind the Israelites of God's wisdom? Because everyone who is relying on their own wisdom or ungodly wisdom from others need to be reminded of that. Man, how many times do we listen to somebody on television that has no clue about the spiritual battles going on in our lives? Why not seek the Lord? Human wisdom is no rival for an all-wise God. He wants us to know the truth. One of the reasons we study God's Word in Sunday school and come to church to hear the Word uh, sang and preached is because God is always preparing us for what is to come in the future that He is already privy to. Here at Marion First Baptist Church, I've spent several weeks preaching about who Jesus is. Why do we need to really dig deep into who Jesus is? Because in chaotic times, he is our anchor. In chaotic times, Jesus is the life preserver preserver for us to toss to others. Jesus knows and Jesus wants to see us through. We need his wisdom and to reject it is probably the silliest thing that we will ever do. The point of this passage is to rely on, that to rely on anything or anyone more than we trust in God's protection and power will ultimately fail us. I could make a list of things we place our hope hope in and besides God. Hezekiah put his faith and trust in the Egyptians and that did not end well. False hope is putting our faith and trust in idols rather than our Lord. You know here recently how many times have I heard politicians say well we have to put our trust in science. Well science has its place when God inspires it but science changes every time a new scientist speaks Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Science is man's evaluation of a set of observable information. It is only as good as what a person can see and understand. There is so much mankind cannot see and cannot understand. God, on the other hand, sees all and knows all. That is where I place my faith. And if he decides to inspire humans to understand and share, then praise ye the Lord. So what's true faithfulness? God remains faithful even when we are not. Isaiah 31 verses 4 and 5 says this. For this is what the Lord said to me. As a lion or young lion growls over its prey when a band of shepherds is called out against it. And it is not terrified by their shouting or subdued by their noise. So the Lord of armies will come down to fight on Mount Zion and on its hill. Like hovering birds, so the Lord of armies will protect Jerusalem by protecting it. He will rescue it by passing over it. He will deliver it. Isaiah explained that God would remain faithful even when his people were unfaithful to him. Wow. We need to stop and just say praise the Lord. That he is faithful. You know, we have a tendency when someone is unfaithful to us, we want to get back to them. We want revenge. We want to, you know, we don't get mad. We get even. Not so with God. He is faithful. Always. Wow. So what do the images of a lion and birds imply about God in this context? Well, just as a fearless lion protects his prey or a mother bird hovers over her young, so the Lord would defend Jerusalem. I ran ac across a website the other day. I, I found it to be very interesting. And some of you ladies that are watching, you may want to uh, 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 hit on that site because it's really designed for you. It's called Mama Bear Apologetics. And it explained uh, in, the, uh, in, in the blog what, why Mama Bear. Here's, here's their answer. A mama bear has two primary instincts, nurturing and protecting. Women are amazing at giving their children love and physical protection. However, when it comes to the battle of ideas, it is assumed that merely being raised in a Christian environment will ensure their children's spiritual well-being. Well, let me give you some news that we have found. According to Barna and USA Today, nearly 59% of youth leave the church after they graduate, and only 17% maintain a biblical worldview. This is where we 
and this is on their side. This is where we as ladies need to rally together, overcome our fears, and start equipping ourselves to answer the questions that our children will inevitably ask and teach them how to demolish arguments raised against the knowledge of God found in 2 Corinthians 10.5. And they wrote, rise up, ladies. Rise up, mama bears. The battle of ideas is real, and it is not taking prisoners. So, this Mama Bear apologetic site, uh, I found it to be interesting, uh, even though I'm not a Mama Bear, but uh, you may want to check that out. So how does God's faithfulness motivate us to be faithful to him? It is appropriate to emulate his faithfulness. 2 Timothy 2.13 says, if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. God honors his word, keeps his promises, and is committed to molding us into his likeness. And that is a good thing. Well, number three, repentance demonstrated. Trusting in God will ultimately lead to victory. Isaiah 31, verses 6 through 9 says this. Return to the one the Israelites have greatly rebelled against. For on that day, every one of you will reject the worthless idols of silver and gold that your own hands have sinfully made. Then Assyria will fail, but not by human sword. A sword will devour him, but not one made by man. He will flee from the sword. His young men will, will, will be put to forced labor. His rock will pass away because of fear, and his officers will be afraid because of the signal flag. This is the Lord's declaration, whose fire is in Zion and whose furnace is in Jerusalem. So Isaiah challenged the people to turn back to God, demonstrating their repentance by removing their idols. Our lesson writer wrote this, Isaiah's message is reminiscent of what God proclaimed on Mount Sinai when he gave the Ten Commandments. Exodus 34, 6 through 7 says, the Lord, the Lord is a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in faithful love and truth, maintaining faithful love to a thousand generations, forgiving iniquity, rebellion, and sin. But he will not leave the guilty unpunished. So in what ways is Messiah's message to the people to cast away their idols and turn to God relevant to the church today? Listen, an idol can be defined as an image or statue of a deity fashioned to be an object of worship. Yeah, that's what we usually think of when we think of an idol. But in today's way of speaking, an idol can be defined as any person, thing, or activity that's honored, valued, or given greater priority than God. You may be thinking, oh, okay, Brother Bob, you've done quit preaching and went to meddling now. Believers must be intentional in keeping our relationship with God in its proper position. Are there things that you're giving higher priority than worship of God or serving God or having a daily time with Him? If there are other things that are more important to you than that, then whether you've got a little statue in your house or not, it is an idol and you need to own up to that because it matters. Your relationship with God matters. And if it's affecting your worship, then you better take a look at it to see if Satan didn't place it there to, to distract you from your relationship with God. Fresh out of college, I accepted a job that did not allow me to worship God in church but one day a week. And it, was just, it wasn't the same day every week because I was on different shifts. So I might go Wednesday night one week or Sunday morning one week or Sunday night. But I never could go more than that unless I was uh, you know, on vacation or something. I remember praying to God, Lord, I promise if you give me a job where I do not have to work and I can attend church and worship you and learn more about you and serve you, then I will do it. I promise you. And you know my heart, Lord. I was doing it before and I will continue to do it if you give me the opportunity. About two weeks later, I got a call from someone offering me a job that I had not even applied to. And I took that job and I was able to attend services. I was able to serve in my little church that I was a part of. 
and God blessed me by giving me the opportunity. So are you doing that? You know, maybe, maybe you're in a work schedule that's really messed you up. And, and this is your Bible study because you can't worship or you can't serve in your church. Have you ever thought about asking the Lord, Lord, if you make a way, I will take advantage of it. But if you want me here uh, during the church times, I will find other ways to learn about you and worship you and, uh, and serve you. Idols are uh, things that we are to turn away from as we turn to God. They are human made and distract God's followers from maintaining devotion to him. We must be intentional about keeping our relationship with God in its proper position. Sometimes we have to rely on God's miraculous intervention, as I did, to allow us to be obedient. He knows our hearts. He knows if we will keep our promises or not. And he has a plan, and we should agree with it and be willing to give up that which is keeping us from doing what he's called us do, to do to help us to learn how to be who he wants us to be. So how does past evidence of God's faithfulness persuade unbelievers to repent and trust in God? Well, there is power in our testimonies. Acts 1.8 says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Maybe my testimony about God providing me a way to be faithful to him by helping me to secure a job that did not draw me away from him will give you hope. And defeat of the Assyrians occurred exactly as God said it would. And maybe that will give us hope in dealing with the enemies that we have today. Notice in verses Isaiah 37, 35 through 36. I will defend this city and rescue it for my sake and for the sake of my servant David. Then the angel of the Lord went out and struck down 185,000 in the camp of the Assyrians. When the people got up the next morning, they were there were all the dead bodies. As with the Assyrians, God will ultimately overthrow all who oppose him. Salvation and eternal life are certain for all who repent of sin and place their faith in Jesus Christ. Believers are to spread lovingly God's message of repentance, God's message of, of forgiveness and deliverance and restoration. The Bible affirms that God is able to provide all that we need. God is our helper, God is our hope, and God is our refuge. Psalm 46, 1, God is our refuge and strength, a helper who is always found in times of trouble. So what have we learned today? Well, trusting in human strength rather than God's power will ultimately lead to defeat. So we need to trust in God's power and God's strength. God remains faithful even when we aren't. And we need to praise him for that. And we need to be grateful enough to be faithful to him. And then trusting in God will ultimately lead to victory. Personal challenge for this week. This week in prayer, ask God to reveal any idols that may exist in your life. And then just be honest with him. Be honest with him. Acknowledge them and ask for God's forgiveness and power to repent to turn away from that and turn to God's ways. Maybe God will lead you to share this with, with an accountability partner uh, that will pray with you that God will continue to be the top priority in your life. I read a, a poster this week by Bernadette Devlin who wrote this, the will of God will never take you to where the grace of God will not protect you. Amen and amen. Remember, God is able to protect his people from enemies. We can trust him in that because he's faithful even when we're not. Let me pray for you today. Lord, my prayer is, is that we would be more faithful to you, Lord, that you would empower us to, to be trustworthy, that you could be uh, a, a people that you could count on. And I pray, Father, that you will use us uh, and that we will destroy any idols that you may be revealing to us in our lives, even as we've studied this lesson today. Lord, things that we have given more priority to than you. So, Father, I pray that you will help us to, to put everything in its proper perspective and that we will utilize the opportunity that we have on this earth to learn, 
to be molded uh, in spirit and in character to be like Jesus. And that, Lord, you will use us for your glory. And you will also teach us what we need to know here so that we can serve you well someday in heaven forever or wherever you assign us. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your protection. And we pray, Lord, that we will share that with others so they can have hope and comfort as well. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.